Welcome to History Revamped. Nearly as soon as people began to congregate in the towns that made civilization possible, they began to construct protective walls around them. Cities offered plentiful prey for attackers and soon developed into culturally significant focal places. Taking a capital city was a common condition of military victory. Behind its own Aurelian walls, some of which still exist today, Rome concealed itself. For instance, Constantinople endured for a thousand years. The Romans were also experts at destroying any barriers that stood in their way. Armed with a variety of remarkable machines to break open resistant cities, the Romans became siege machines hegemon, and dominated the whole known world. In this video I would show you some terrifying and extremely deadly Roman siege weapons, which you definitely wouldn't like to see while being in the encircled city. Let's get started. 1. The Ballista. Ballistae predate Rome and were most likely developed by the military engineers of ancient Greece. They resemble enormous crossbows, although the bolt is frequently replaced by a stone. Ballistae were advanced, precise weapons by the time the Romans started using them, they were rumored to be able to take out single opponents, according to one account, pinning a goth to a tree. The discharge of twisted animal sinew ropes propelled a sliding carriage forward, blasting a bolt or rock up to a distance of about 500 meters. The target was selected with the use of a universal joint developed specifically for this equipment. Ballistae were on the ships Julius Caesar first sent ashore in his attempted invasion of Britain in 55 BC, after they had helped him subdue the Gauls. They were standard kit after that, growing in size and becoming lighter and more powerful as metal replaced wood construction. Ballista lived on in the Eastern Roman military after the fall of the Western Empire. The word lives on in our modern dictionaries as a route for ballistics, the science of projecting missiles. 2. The Onager, a forerunner of medieval catapults and mangonels that still hadn't equaled their force several decades later, was also propelled by torsion. It was an easy-to-use device. The base and the resistance against which the firing arm was smashed were two frames, one horizontal and one vertical. The firing arm was lowered until it was level. To send the arm back towards the vertical, where the vertical buffer would halt its progress and help to launch its missile forward, tension was released from twisted ropes inside the frame. Ancient fortifications would be greatly harmed by a simple rock, but missiles might be covered in burning pitch or other nasty surprises. According to a modern report, bombs, defined as clay balls with combustible stuff in them, were launched and detonated. Ammianus Marcellinus, a soldier himself, provided an account of the Onager in action. During his military career in the 4th century, he fought against the Iranian Sassanids and the Germanic Alamanni. 3. Siege Towers Height is a great advantage in warfare, and siege towers were a portable source. The Romans were masters of these technological breakthroughs that date back at least as far as the 9th century BC. Rather than delivering soldiers to the tops of city walls, most Roman siege towers were used to allow men on the ground to work at destroying the fortifications while covering fire and shelter was provided from above. There aren't many records of particular Roman siege towers, but one that predates the empire has been detailed. The Helepolis, taker of cities, used at Rhodes in 305 BC, was 135 feet high, divided into nine stories. That tower could carry 200 soldiers, who were kept busy firing an arsenal of siege engines down on the city's defenders. The lower levels of towers often housed battering rams to slam into the walls. As height was the key advantage sought with siege towers, if they weren't large enough, ramps or mounds would be built. 4. Battering rams. Technology doesn't come much simpler than a ram, a log with a sharpened or toughened end, but the Romans perfected even this relatively blunt object. The ram had an important symbolic role. 
Its use marked the start of a siege and once the first rim hit a city's walls the defenders had forfeited any rights to anything other than slavery or slaughter. There is a good description of a ram from the siege of Jotapata, in modern Israel. It was tipped with a metal ram's head and swung from a beam rather than just carried. Sometimes the men who pulled back the ram prior to slamming it forward were further protected with a fireproofed shelter called a testudo, like the tortoise-like shield formations of the infantry. A further refinement was a hooked chain at the tip which would remain in any hole crated and pull out further stones. The ram was very simple and very effective. Josephus, the writer who saw the great beam swinging against the citadel of Jotapata in 67 AD wrote that some walls were felled with a single blow. I hope you enjoyed the video, if yes consider leaving a like and subscribe. This was History Revamped, to the next video.